Well, good morning and good evening in India. This is a day three of our U.S.-India Navigating New Challenges Week. Uh, we look at opportunities between the two countries as you forge a better, stronger partnership and look for opportunity between our member companies. We are delighted and honored that for this session, uh, we have a very dynamic minister, Shri Ravi Shankar Prasad, and uh, I've had the pleasure of working with him for many, many years. And I have to say that uh, he has been very responsive, resilient, reactive on issues and trying to find solution as we move forward. So Mr. Pr uh, Minister Prasad, welcome to the event. We also had Monday, uh, Shri Jai Shankarji uh, give his opening remarks. And then we had other ministers coming in, and we are also honored to have the Prime Minister come in tomorrow to give his remarks uh, to, to the uh, event itself. And we did have Vice President Pence speak about glowingly about the relationship between India and the U.S. So we are delighted, honored to have you on this session in conversation with the Chairman of Deloitte, Puneet Ranjan. I'm going to pass it over to Virat Bhatia of Apple to give his uh, opening remarks here. Honorable Minister for Communications and Electronics and IT, Law and Justice, uh, Shri Ravi Shankar Prasadji, um, US India Forum's uh, Vice Chairman and CEO, the Deloitte Kobal, Puneet Rajan, ladies and gentlemen. It gives me great pleasure to introduce this opening plenary on day three of this virtual event uh, at the US um, India Forum called Navigating for New Challenges. The sectors that we hope to discuss today are totally unparalleled in terms of their achievements and contributions and growth to India's economy currently and in the future. As we gallop towards the $5 trillion economy, this is perhaps the most important sector across the board. Uh, this has been proven beyond doubt even during the COVID-19 uh, pandemic when the telecommunications, internet, IT, and device sector came together to hold up the economy in almost every part of the world, especially in India. Imagine uh, how we would have coped with this uh, pandemic in absence of a digital infrastructure that India has built over the last two decades. Yes, two weeks ago, on 15th of August 2020, India celebrated the 25th anniversary of the first mobile call made in India. At that time, there was less than one phone per 100 citizens. Today, we have over a billion mobile users and half a billion internet subscribers. A remarkable journey of 25 years that has changed the face of India in every way possible. India is connecting its villages at one level and pursuing strategic plans to ensure 5G connectivity for its citizens in the near future at the other. These are policy challenges unparalleled in any part of the world. Let's turn to the IT space for a moment. Today, India's influence and contribution to the space makes it an undisputed global leader. India's IT industry stands at over $175 billion, with exports crossing over $136 billion. It employs over 4 million professionals. The other incredible transformation relates to data, not just some data, but some unthinkable numbers. India has the world's highest data usage per smartphone at an average of 9.8 gigabits per month, and this is expected to double to 18 GB by 2024. This is why the government is now deeply engaged in the process of putting rules, laws, and processes in place. In fact, one of the most important engagements of the industry over the next two years is expected to be in this space. Non-personal data, personal data protection, intermediary rules, e-commerce policy are some of the key opportunities for the government and industry to engage meaningfully. This has global ramifications for India. Last and not the least, the electronics manufacturing. This has been uh, a big change for India from moving from a big importer of electronics to the tune of $53 billion in 2019, second only after oil. And this is when the government came up with the national policy on electronics in 2019, which aims to change the paradigm from an import substitution to an export-led economy for electronics. In the last one year, has seen hectic and meaningful by the government to bring both policies and schemes aimed at transforming India into a manufacturing hub for the world. And, and not just that, to start with, smartphones components, deepening of the global supply chain, and the recent trilogy of schemes led by PLI 
are at the heart of this um, leadership that uh, uh, Modi's government is showing. It brings me into introducing the one person that's in the middle of this incredibly exciting work. Uh, he's also leading this work. Uh, he's extremely humble um, and believes that this is merely work in progress. He reminds us every day there is more to be done uh, and remains open to new ideas. It's my great privilege to introduce one of the senior most ministers of the government who leads three very important ministries, Sri Ravi Shankar Prasad, Minister for Law and Justice, for Communications and for Electronics and IT. A senior advocate in the Supreme Court by profession, he's been a member of parliament for over 20 years. Since his first appointment as a minister in Atalji's government in the year 2000, he's led transformation in several key sectors. His passion for change has continued as a minister in Prime Minister Modi's two successive governments since 2014. The list of reforms that he's led is long. Coal sector, FM radio, DTH, Indian movie, movie industry, digitalization of the cable TV network, Digital India, and significant portion of Make in India all form part of the Honorable Minister's portfolio. He is deeply committed to inclusive growth. In his current focus is the world's largest uh, optical fiber broadband network, Bharatnet, which aims to connect over 600,000 villages via a high-speed broadband network. Even as the law ministry has piloted several key legislative reforms. Finally, I'd be failing in my duties if I did not share his role in transforming India's electronic sector in India. Due to his unrelenting efforts and thought leadership, India has become the second largest mobile manufacturer destination in the world. I have personally seen his passion for developing the sector and can vouch for the fact that he's just a phone call away when the industry needs him. We're delighted that he could join us from his constituency in Patna today. Engaging him for today's discussion is Mr. Puneet Ranjan, the Vice Chairman of the US-India Strategic Forum and um, um, the CEO of Deloitte Global. When he sits on the uh, Deloitte Global Board of Directors, uh, Deloitte operates in 150 countries uh, with approximately 330,000 professionals. Prior to the current role, Puneet served as the chairman of Deloitte U.S. Board of Directors, and he's also a member of the Business Roundtable and the International Business Council of Life. Welcome, Sri Prasad. Take it away, Puneet. Thank you, Mukesh and Virat. Um, uh, welcome, uh, Honorable Minister Prasad. It's great to, to have this uh, honor to uh, interview you. As Virat said, tremendous progress in India, and COVID-19 certainly has brought digitization uh, to the forefront. It has reaffirmed how important digitization is. And again, as Virat said, uh, there's a real convergence of issues relating to regulations, public policy, technology, innovation, all topics that uh, you uh, have the portfolio for. So welcome, I'm really looking forward to this discussion. Namaste. Um, let's get started. Uh, the first is around ease of doing business, uh, Minister Prasad. And uh, I know this is a big focus of yours. It's a big focus of uh, Prime Minister Modi's government. Um, and I know that uh, India is, uh, uh, is uh, working to further ease the process uh, for commercial disputes and other business-specific legislation. What, with that in mind, how do we leverage technology to bring about more transparency and objectivity in the judicial process? Virat, Mukesh, uh, other, my good friends on the panel, pleasure to be with all of you, all of you. Yes, I had three portfolios. I thought I will begin with IT, electronics, then come to communication and lastly to law, but no problem. Law is the first question you have asked. You know, transparency has to be ensured first and foremost by the political leadership. And I'm very proud to say in the seventh of our government, I don't know if wish to make any political government, but the kind of problem India was suffering before the government came to power is a thing of the past. And one mantra which works in the corridors of power is whatever is doable shall be done. Regardless of whatever you do, whatever is not doable shall not be done regardless of whatever you do. If that norm becomes the real norm, 
Then the second mantra of our leader, Prime Minister says, India must reform, perform in order to transform. As the minister, I have repealed more than 2,000 old obsolete laws, which were a stumbling block. We facilitated a lot of uh, remo removal of archaic regulations, etc., etc. Now, just to tell you the kind of jump we had from 142 to 63 in the ease of doing index, a business index, that's not a mean achievement. Strictly speaking on the legal side, we have changed a lot of laws. Commercial court system is in place. Anything for a smaller dispute, mediation is in place. We have come with changing the arbitration laws, whereby institutional arbitration is being promoted by having an arbitration council of India to vet and classify the arbitration institutional platforms available. We have changed the um, uh, specific relief act whereby performance of contract is the norm, damages in excess, and a whole range of other things we have done. Yes, you are right. Digitization is important. And in this pandemic, more than 700, sorry, 1100,000 cases were done in the district courts of India digitally, in the high courts of India, and also in the Supreme Court. That's how we are doing, and we shall continue to do. You know, part of what makes uh, this conversation so interesting is exactly as you said, the wide portfolio that you hold. Uh, so I will, I, I do have a few more questions on law and data, uh, but I will put those aside for a minute and let's go to your second portfolio, which is IT. Um, one of the shining examples uh, has been the IT sector in India, and uh, I know this government is very focused on it. Uh, India has become a formidable player in the IT services sector. There are still some challenges, uh, but uh, uh, there is a great opportunity to further harness uh, the IT sector, particularly in the software uh, space, uh, to develop high-value products. What's your perspective? What is the government doing to uh, enable this uh, even further? Since I'm talking to a lot of my senior friends across the Atlantic, uh, let me very briefly tell you what is our digital vision. We are talking in challenging times, but if we are not able to talk physically, we are talking digitally and sitting far away city of Patna, I'm talking to all of you friends in America. That is a great achievement by itself. The world is never going to be the same. And what makes me a little satisfied, the GDP rates are falling everywhere for very valid reasons. But my two portfolios, IT and communication, have shown a rise of 7.1% because of the great use of these two platforms during this pandemic. Work from home has become a great success. None of Indian IT industries saw at all because we liberalized the entire, and I took a very proactive measure. But one aspect of India's digital story under Prime Minister Narendra Modi must be noted. While we are proud of the IT services done by Indian industry, and many of you are today joining in that success from what you all have done to your company. Digital India is beyond that. Digital India, simply put, is designed to empower ordinary Indians with the power of technology. Bridge the digital divide. And most important, bring in digital inclusion. And this must be achieved through technology, which is also homegrown and inclusive and developmental. Now, let me give you just one example how we have been able to do it. During this COVID, I can tell you, with the jam trinity of Dandan, the poor man's bank account, Aadhaar, the digital identity, and mobile phone, we have been able to help more than 420 million poor people with direct benefit transfer of the entitlement during this COVID. We have given 200 million women rupees 500 per month 
for their students is still going on. Everywhere there is not bank. I activate my other department, the postal department. And I'm happy to tell you, India Post distributed $64 million to the poor in villages remote where there is no bank or ATM. Only by an app with a finger in print. Now, how digital technology is reforming and we need to inclusion. And this is only an example I told to you. Yes, as Virat rightly said, we were linking 250,000 cluster of villages, which we call Gram Panchayat, by BharatNet Optical Fiber. I'm very proud that the Prime Minister has gone beyond. We shall link 600,000 villages of India by optical fiber in 1,000 days. A giant task. India is the cheapest uh, uh, data price here. India is a big economy in terms of digital economy. We are promoting digital economy in all its ramifications. We are very determined to make our digital economy a $1 trillion economy by 2025. And very briefly, what Virat alluded to, we want India to become a big software producing nations. I've given a mantra. India is the country having the biggest download of apps. Now Indians must upload Made in India apps. We had a proper hackathon for that. 7,000 companies and individuals Made in India applied. Some of the finest products. And the PM complimented that they have become very good. Uh, today, to you, we have also banned 118 apps more, which were problem from the point of view of security, surveillance, and rights of Indians as far as data is concerned. India has become the third biggest startup movement in the country. And just to elaborate on what Virat said, and it's very important, the special link incentive, all the top companies, whether it is Samsung or all the contract manufacturers of Apple have come to India, they have committed investment of worth 1.5 billion. And remember, I announced the policy during COVID, and the last date was 31st of July. And they have committed to make mobile phone and components worth $153 billion in the coming five years. So that is the potential of India, even during these challenging times, from IT to IT services, to digital inclusion, to electronic manufacturing, to software products, to startup. The entire IT system in that way is resonating. One last thing I have to mention to you. I had always decided and thought that digital India will never succeed unless it becomes a mass. And today, the small towns of India, tier two and tier three cities, are becoming good hub of innovations, of entrepreneurship. And recently, I have launched a scheme, Chunauti, whereby we will pick up. 300 young entrepreneurs for their products and give them 2.5 million rupees as incentive to further develop their products. So this is how the entire scheme is working. But very briefly, I must convey as to what is the whole ecosystem from service to products to inclusion in terms of IT ecosystem. Mr. Prasad, I will ask you in a few minutes to just give us your closing comments, but I do want to follow up on two things. Very impressive in terms of what you just covered around Digital India, and I have two really quick follow-up uh, questions. One, the Prime Minister did announce that 600 thousand villages, six lakh villages, will be connected by high-speed optic uh, optical fiber in the next 1,000 days. It is impressive. And some of these statistics that you have shared, some that the government has shared, are just absolutely uh, impressive. And as an Indian uh, that grew up in India, it is uh, impressive to see. How is that going? Uh, how has COVID um, impacted that very quickly? And then I have another follow-up question on the comments that you just made. 
Uh, COVID certainly has impacted because laying down fiber is also a physical activity. Therefore, I have involved my common service centers. It is just like a digital million boys and girls work, about 400,000 in the country. We have involved them also. We are going to expedite it. But one thing, remember, an important component of Narendra Modi government is reform, perform, and deliver. Therefore, if the Prime Minister has announced something, will surely deliver. And take it from me. My leader monitors the delivery process personally also in a very effective manner. Therefore, from roads to electricity to uh, Bharat Net, optical fiber, or electronic manufacturing, all we are able to deliver. I'm quite sure in 1,000 days, 6,000 villages, 600,000 villages will do it. Well, that's great to hear. Um, I think my colleagues on this uh, webcast would, uh, I would be remiss if I didn't ask this question of you. Um, you talked about software development. I think that's excellent, uh, something that uh, India certainly has the potential to do. Um, and I'm certainly very bullish. My firm is very bullish. Uh, but intellectual property rights, uh, I know that that is of great concern uh, and uh, certainly of import uh, to uh, many global companies, uh, many American companies. So I'd like to just get very briefly your comments on how India will ensure that intellectual property rights are are, um, are protected. Why not? Any creation must be protected. Why not? There's no doubt for that. And we have been doing that in India. One thing I must tell you, very keen that India becomes a huge center of data ecosystem as well. Therefore, data is personal and data is also public. We have set up a data protection law under examination by the parliamentary committee. And non-personal data is also being examined by another committee headed by a very eminent IT expert, this one, founder of Infosys, having the widest consultation possible. Therefore, I want India to become an important center of data economy. Data economy requires movement of data also. So we are quite open about all those things while protecting super sensitive data of individuals, having a proper regime. Uh, I can only tell you, be assured that whatever is intellectual property of creators certainly will be respected and should be respected. Let me be very clear about it. Well, that's uh, that's good. Uh, Minister Prasad, I have a whole series of questions, frankly, that I would have loved to have asked you, but uh, unfortunately, uh, we don't have the time. I would like to uh, hear from you uh, closing remarks. Uh, so if you would kindly please, uh, uh, please provide those, uh, we would appreciate it. Very briefly, my name is Mr. of Nirbhar Bharat. Aat Nirbhar Bharat does not mean an isolated India. And India is an isolation. We are very keen in to become an important center of supply chain. Aat Bharat means India becoming an important component of the global economy because India is a major economy itself in terms of innovation, in terms of manufacturing, in terms of global supply chain. And above all, India is a huge domestic market itself and a lot of talented human resource, some of whom are sitting before me on the screen. In that light, I would urge all my friends in this US-India strategic uh, interaction that India is now emerging global power. And don't keep all the eggs in one basket. The post-COVID, the world must see more than one alternative. India is going to offer that alternative. I am. Ne I never rest on my laurels. I have liked Virat's fulsome days on me. It is a work in progress. And I will only conclude with this. I am just a phone call away. If you have any problem, feel free to talk to me directly. I will try my best to find solutions. Mr. Prasad, that is, uh, that is excellent. Uh, we do have one minute left. I'm going to ask you one last uh, question building on your conclusion, 
what is it that we can do um, and many of us that have vested interest in India, personal vested interest, see the potential of India. What is it that uh, you see us doing uh, to uh, to help on this journey that uh, the Prime Minister and the government have, uh, have laid out? Very quickly, in two minutes' time, we are coming with a lot of centers of excellence. Uh, IoT, my Prime Minister is very keen to promote artificial intelligence. And we are using this great platform for healthcare, for education, and for agriculture. And one request to make to all of you is I am very keen to promote 100,000 digital villages, self sufficient autonomous. Can some of you, my friends, pick up some of these digital villages, mentor them as their godfathers? In terms of healthcare, digital education, skilling, empowerment. I'm telling you, India is waiting for a change. It is nice to see people with smartphones in Kasba towns telling me with jubilation, sir, I'm also doing Googling. You know, I'm very pleased <laughs> to hear that. I, I also employ a search engine. You know, it is amazing. For me, as this IT minister of last six years, this metamorphosis of India which is happening is truly assuring. People trust our leader, the Prime Minister. In that process, can you pick up some of these threads of change? I'm sure it will give, give you personal satisfaction. Thank you very much. Thank you. Stay safe. Thank you. Thank you. My greetings to all of you. My greetings to all of you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, now please welcome Mr. Som Satsangi, Managing Director of Hewlett Packard Enterprises, to provide us with a vote of thanks. On behalf of USISPF, let me express sincere gratitude to Sri Ravi Dr. Prashad for sharing his thought as candidately as always. In continuation, to Sri uh, Prashad thoughts, I believe that access to technology is equally, if not more, important than the technology itself. And that's why projects like CSC, BharatNet, and Digital Shakshatra Mission are almost mandatory to Indian digital journey. Our Honorable Minister, vision of making India a digitally empowered society would happen only when we can ensure inclusive digital transformation. To summarize, Honorable Mr. Thought, the top three things which comes to my mind, uh, which takes into account while defining a roadmap for India digital transformation, which Honorable Minister spoke about. One, the first one is digital India is all about inclusiveness and bringing the digital divide. Also, you talk about 600,000 villages to be connected by high-speed fiber. He also spoke about the, we are the third largest startup nation and our focus should be primarily to reform, perform, and deliver. So on behalf of USISPF, once again, my sincere thank to all of you for attending this session. Thank you very much and have a good day.